tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, uh, this is a lawnmower, a robot obviously. Something you're pretty much used to, I guess. And uh, when I was sitting there in the sun and watching the robot, this is a time-lapse video, of course, I was thinking about uh, how would you visualize this for a customer who asks you to visualize the autonomy of a robot which uh, mows you along. And uh, this is what I can show you today. Uh, this is a very simple robot consisting of uh, just a polygon cube which are scaled up at the back and the robot is uh, doing its job like uh, mowing around the trees and uh, mowing the grass. It's not actually cutting the grass in this example because cutting the grass is something quite difficult but it's manageable. Uh, I'm just uh, showing you ways to animate that robot on that hilly surface. Nothing else and nothing more really. By the way, these snowy things here on the ground and the trees come from the paint effects, which is uh, slightly outdated. You have We have better methods now to create grass, but uh, it's a very simple and straightforward way to cre create grass. And uh, by the way, when you render this, it doesn't really look good. And uh, you cannot render the paint effects in Arnold. You have to convert them to polygons. And I just did it so fast that I... I think I forgot to convert the stems of the trees to polygons. Never mind. I want to show you how this works to move that robot along a hilly surface. New scene. Well, we start by creating a surface and I, I'm a fan of uh, NURBS modeling. That's why I choose a NURBS plane. And uh, with the attribute editor, you see make NURBS plane and you can change the width very easily like this without really using the scale tool. And in order to make it slightly irregular, I change the length ra ratio so it's not totally square. I need a few more patches in both dimensions because I want to deform it. And uh, I could do it with the deformer now, but uh, let me just uh, select with the right mouse button the control vertices and I select those ones and those ones with the key B. You have the soft selection tool, B, you toggle soft select on and off. It's on now. And when I move those CVs up now, I get this hilly structure. I want to have a higher hill up here and some more here and I move this all the way down and maybe this one down as well. And at the back, quite a massive mountain or whatever. This is my lawn object mode. Uh, the trick is to create a curve on that surface. And this is being done by this magnet up here. It's called make the surface live make the selected object live, in our case, the nerve sur surface. That's exactly what we're going to do when we invoke this command. The surface is deselected and I cannot select it. But what I can do now is um, to plant objects on that surface, for example, but I want to create a curve on that surface. So I choose this tool here and let us uh, think about, uh, this is the starting point. This is where the charging unit for the robot is in this corner. So we start here and let's imagine a big tree up here on the hill. Uh, nothing else really. And um, I start here and I draw a line like this now. And uh, maybe in this pattern I could do it in a totally different way, of course, but uh, this is the way to go about it. And I'm drawing that curve on that surface. Now I need to go around that tree and back here and over here and back here etc. I need to reach all parts of the lawn of course. 
that's why I do this in a more or less straight way and now I need to go back to the beginning the curve is on that surface and this is almost the trick which makes the robot move on that curve along that curve now uh, for the robot let's create a polygon object like uh, for example well let's create a cone a cone is down here let's move it up and I want to attach that cone to that curve so I select the cone and with the shift key I select the curve and now I go to constrain if you don't see constraint here it is because you're not under the animation module if you're for example under rendering you don't see a constraint here but under animation you do and under constraint you find the motion paths and in the motion path attach to motion path that's exactly what we want we want our lawn mower robot to be attached to the path which we drew with a graphics tablet or with a mouse uh, if you use the, the option box you can do this uh, but uh, I show another way to um, change the uh, settings later because now when I do this the cone jumps to the beginning of my curve and it uh, does a very fast job and the reason for that is because uh, the command constraint to the motion path uh, respects that timeline from 1 to 120 that's why you see this number here it's a 1 and a 120 almost at the same place because we start and end at the same place so it's so going the animation is going from frame 1 to 120 when we, we extend this to 800 the cone is still moving in that very fast way and fi it's finished after 120 frames now how can I change this and uh, you could have changed this in the settings uh, but uh, I want to show you how to go about it you go to windows and here you have the animation editors and you go to the graph editor and the graph editor shows you this line it starts slowly it accelerates and it ends slowly which is just fine for uh, the real robot life you could now uh, insert other points in order to speed the motion up or down but uh, all we want to do now is we select the endpoint which is currently set to frame 120 and we type in 800 here and now when I press A I see basically the same curve but it ends at 800 frames and uh, this is why the whole process is going slower now. When you look down you see that the cone penetrates the surface. Why is that? Well it's because the curve attaching the curve uh, the cone to the curve respects the cone's center of the well it's pivot uh, the center of the of the object of the cone and uh, we can move the pivot down we need to be in the translation tool that's the W key and now we press insert and we move the pivot down it doesn't move our cone really it moves the pivot of the cone and we can set it here and press insert again and now we have the cone not penetrate the ground anymore I hope you get the idea and have a good day bye bye